Exercise can be fun to talk about, but maybe a little less fun to do, especially if we have to keep doing it for minutes or hours on end. Here we discuss how low can we go in terms of brief bouts of exercise and what it can do for our body and brain. Can four seconds make a difference? We'll find out. Four seconds. All right, check this out. <laughs> I am going to vigorously move my arms for four seconds as fast as I possibly can to get the feel for this. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, it made me laugh, which is potentially good for my body and brain, but my cardiovascular health, I'm not so sure. But Dr. Ed Coyle of the Human Performance Lab at the University of Texas thought that maybe if he strung together a series of four second bursts over the course of just 10 minutes, maybe it would make a difference. Well, Dr. Coyle started with college students. He used bikes that allowed them to get going really fast, really quickly, and he would time them for four seconds and then have them rest for 15 to 30 seconds before doing it again, all over the span of 10 minutes. Now, 10 minutes, I mean, that could feel like a workout session. And if I only had to work hard for four seconds throughout this whole exercise experience, that might sound a little more appealing. They also suggested that in real life, you could sprinkle them in throughout the day, so I wouldn't even need to do them all at once. What Dr. Coyle found was that by doing this type of exercise on a regular basis, it actually increased fitness in these college kids. Dr. Coyle says that these tiny bursts of exercise temporarily deprive your muscles of fuel and oxygen needed to make more fuel. This means that your blood volume increases, your heart pumps more with each beat, and your body develops more mitochondria, which are like little tiny energy producing factories. So then the question becomes, does this work for older people? So they recruited 50 people from the age of 50 to 68 who didn't have any major health problems, but didn't exercise. Three times a week over the course of two months, they did 15 minute exercise sessions where they would sprint for four seconds and then rest. At the beginning, they were resting the rest of the 56 seconds of that whole minute before sprinting for four seconds and doing it again. But by the end of the training program, they had reduced the rest time so that they could sprint for four seconds and only rest for 26 seconds before the next sprinting regimen. The results again were very positive. Dr. Coyle and his colleagues found that it not only increased fitness for these older adults, but it also increased muscle mass. I also like to point out that Dr. Coyle said that there were no cases of injury or even delayed onset muscle soreness when they used their specialized bicycles. He also said that the volunteers enjoyed themselves so much that they wanted to continue on when the program was done. Exercise can apparently be fun, and if you presented this type of data to a good personal trainer, they could likely help you find some way to approximate this type of exercise in your life. So this showed good effect for general health and muscle mass, but what about keeping us alive? A study of over 70,000 people in the UK that was published this year looked at how can small bursts of energy potentially keep us alive? Vigorous physical activity for even 15, 20 minutes for a whole week spread out in any increments that you want, even two minutes at a time, was linked to lower incidence of death by any cause. This decrease was 18 to 24 percent. If you can stretch your minutes of exercise for this week up to 54 minutes, your benefit increases even more. Your risk of death from any cause decreases by 36% and your risk of getting heart disease decreases by 35%. So here we have evidence that short bursts of exercise can keep us alive, but how about impacting our brain functioning and our mood? A Japanese study showed that for younger adults, running just for 10 minutes showed increases in mood and measures of reaction time for an executive function task. 
this test in particular was all of our brains want to do something impulsive. Don't let it do that impulsive thing. Do this thing instead. And they were faster at it. This means something like, oh, I really want to eat that candy before dinner time, but I'm not going to do it. Brain imaging showed increased activity in the prefrontal cortex. And again, this is associated with frontal lobe functions like working memory, planning, organizing, and problem solving. While this particular research didn't include the older generations, we're just waiting for more people to put the time and energy into helping us understand how small bursts of energy impact those people too. And if any of you know of more research that's been done for us to add to this review, feel free to comment below. One final bonus. A lot of this research talks about vigorous exercise. Well, how do you know if it's vigorous? One official definition of vigorous, according to researchers, is activity that is six times your resting metabolic rate. So what in the world does that mean in real life? <laughs> well, you can get vigorous exercise from dancing energetically or from carrying groceries up some flights of stairs. Anything that causes you to have to breathe heavily so that you can't have a conversation or complete full sentences. If you are tracking your heart rate, if it gets up to 77% of your maximum heart rate, this is one definition of vigorous. Most fitness trackers calculate this automatically for you, but if you don't have one of those, you can calculate it yourself without even having to do the math. I'll add a link below for an online calculator. So we've reviewed some studies, again, opening our eyes to the benefits of exercise. This time without the need to necessarily do that recommended dose of 150 minutes a week. Starting small with little bursts of vigorous exercise can get us a long way in terms of our goal of being healthier people. In doing this research, yesterday I was motivated enough to look on YouTube for a video of 10 minutes of a high intensity workout. I didn't have time to go for a jog or go to the gym, but I thought, you know, 10 minutes? I have 10 minutes. At the end, I was sweaty. I felt like I had accomplished something. I'll put a link to that video down below too. So if you wanna check it out, maybe that would be a good one for you. I hope that these ideas inspire you to sneak in some exercise and feel good about your efforts, or maybe to watch some more of my videos on the ways we can baby step toward brain health. Cheers to small bursts of greatness.